Hi, this is Roswell. We're talking about Unit 1, quiz number one, and I just wanted to go over a little bit about uh, what was expected on that. So let's get started. In a biology experiment, the number of yeast cells is determined after 24 hours of growth at different temperatures. Identify the independent and dependent variables in the experiment. So if we say that the number of yeast cells is determined, that's a pretty good guess that we're uh, measuring that. And uh, when we talk about growth at different temperatures, it's pretty clear that we're setting that. We set that as a uh, manipulated variable, and the number of yeast cells becomes our responding variable. So, uh, I apologize again for this slightly, uh, well, it, it's not kind of the most current terms we're using, but anyway, the independent variable is the one uh, that we are changing, and so that's going to be, independent variable is going to be the temperature, and the dependent variable is the one that responds to that, or um, that we're measuring. So the dependent variable is going to be the number of yeast cells. So if you got that connection two points, if you got that connection two points, we called that number one on the grading rubric and that's plus four out of four. Part B, we're supposed to draw the graph of the following data and we're labeling our access axes and following all recommended data presentation guidelines. Remember these presentation guidelines are in the handout that is called experimental design. That is from unit one. I've got the temperature over here. This is kind of our x-axis and the growth is our y-axis. I know that those are reversed. I apologize for that. That's maybe to try and confuse you, but uh, you can uh, hopefully still realize that the temperature is your x-axis or your manipulated variable, your independent variable, and your growth, the number of yeast cells, is your y variable. Okay, so here we go. What we've got, we've got an x-axis along here, so we'll just say here this is x, and we've got our y-axis over here. But in really, this is the number of yeast cells. And in particular, that's called growth. So there's a mathematical model that talks about x and y, but in reality, we're talking about temperature in degrees C and growth in yeast cells. So if this is 0, 0, just to kind of keep things uh, consistent. I can go 5 here, 10, 15, 20, and 25 if I need to. And then I can go, I've got uh, 0.33 to 0 0.85, I can do 0 0.9 up here and 0 down here and go 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and so forth. So just setting up your graph, let's see, there are some points in the rubric 2, 4, and 5. 2 says, did you label the x-axis with temperature and degrees C? 2 points. 4 says, it's traditional that you plot uh, the dependent variable here and the independent variable here. So there's 2 points for that. And then 5 point, so, sorry, rubric point number 5 was, do you use a consistent scale? So yes, I'm using consistent scale. Every line is the same amount of, say, temperature or growth in yeast cells. Then over here, the rubric said uh, part three, part six. Three said, do you have the axes labeled? So yes, plus two points. And then uh, point uh, six, uh, sorry, rubric point six was for, 
do you use consistent scale on the y-axis? So that's true as well. All right, so let me uh, let me get a different color here so that we can um, uh, see it relative to the green. So I have at uh, temperature 5 degrees C, I have a growth in yeast cells 0.85. That's a point right up here at 5 and then 0.85. At 10 degrees C, I have 0.51, so just a hair over 0.5. And then uh, at 0.39, I have, sorry, at 15 degrees C, I have 0.39, that's just under 4 here. And then at 0.33, sorry, at 20 degrees, I have 0.33, uh, so that's about here. Uh, so point seven on the rubric said, do you have the points in the right places? So four points, two points for the X, sorry, one point for the X and Y being correct each time. So eight points. Rubric point number eight was, do you draw a smooth curve through these points? So let's see if I can draw a smooth curve. Uh, it's not going from point to point. Oh, actually, point eight was, do you have little circles around these? They're called point protectors. The idea is the center of the circle is where the point started. Your smooth curve can touch these po point protectors, and it, may, oh, it doesn't get to obliterate the point. So that was four points. Do you draw a little circle around each of those? And then point nine was, uh, the rubric point nine was, do you draw a smooth curve? So I'm drawing the smooth curve as smooth as possible through here. Okay. And that was five points. In other words, do you go smoothly from here to here, and then here to here, here to here? So one, two, three, four, five segments. Do you have a smooth line? So the big question, is this curve linear? As the temperature increases, does this decrease the same amount each time? And the answer is no. And so uh, what you do is you look up on your, uh, your recipe. So that was also in the handout, experimental design. And you find that any graph that looks like this, you have to plot y equals 1 over x uh, times a constant m slope plus an intercept p. Uh, so what I could do is do a 1 over x for each of these, uh, and then I could uh, plot that same curve. And we didn't really leave room on the quiz, and so this is where we have to bring in some of the software help. So ideally you would go to Excel or some kind of other tool and you would type in the following. Uh, so we're going to use Logger Pro in this class and I should just say it's required that you learn Logger Pro. But uh, I didn't say that and so now I'm saying it. The short name for temperature is T, the units for temperature. So I double-clicked on this column here. I said time is our independent variable. It's basically degrees C. And I'm done. This, uh, the responding variable is growth. We're going to call that G, and it's going to be number of yeast cells. Now I have my Y, uh, sorry, my X and my Y axis. I'm going to type in my data. My data goes 5, 10, 15, 20. And then back here, it's 0 0.85, 0 0.51, 0 0.39, 0 0.33. So if I adjust my curve, I do indeed see um, this 1 over x type shape. So if I plot 1 over x, uh, I should get a transformation of this curve into something that I hope is linear. So let's give it a try. First, I'm going to insert a 
a new calculated column. And the calculated column is going to be 1 over a temperature. And we're going to call it 1 over T is a short name. And the units are going to be 1 over degrees C. And the variable that we're setting is temperature, but it's 1 over that. So 1 divided by temperature. OK, so inserting a calculated column, you can, you can do any calculation you want on any column. Here's where you define the calculation of the existing column. When you define a calculation on the existing column, you create a new one. We define a short name, and we define units. When I'm done with that, I should be able to insert another graph. Uh, control R to see that graph by itself. And it's not there yet. I've got to basically say I want to plot growth versus 1 over the temperature. Control J to see it. Uh, all the data together. Auto scale from 0. Right click. Auto scale from 0. And I should see my line with a 0, 0 point. If I click here to do my linear regression, my linear fit, I get the following information. Uh, G equals mx plus b, but x is 1 over temperature now. So the slope is growth in yeast cells divided by 1 divided by c. And then the, the y-intercept is 0 0.1597 is the number of yeast cells. So notice from my linearization, I got the numbers that I can plug into my model. So let's write the general definition of our model again on our paper. So back to the quiz. And let's uh, do my model in, uh, in another color here, so blue. Uh, this was a successful model for the data, but it's not y's and x's. It's growth equals the slope times 1 over the temperature plus b. So my model uses the data that I had from my experiment. And what I have to do is I have to say that growth in number of yeast cells, number yc, is that OK if I shorten it? Because it's just these things get a little bit long. Is the slope, so we look back here, what was my slope? 3.458. And that is uh, slope of this graph is number of yeast cells divided by 1 divided by temperature. So what you do is you can say that's number of yeast cells times the temperature in degrees C. That's the units for slope times 1 over the temperature. And the units of 1 over the temperature is 1 over degrees C plus my y-intercept. My y-intercept is 0 0.1597. times the number of yeast cells. OK, and so you can verify uh, that the units on one side, the number of yeast cells, is the same as the units on the other side. That means the slope was calculated correctly. And uh, this degree C cancels that degree C when you plug in a temperature. And so now, the point of building a mathematical model is now I can Given some growth, I can solve for the temperature. Or given the temperature, I can predict the growth that I should see in my system. And so uh, these are how the points were broken out. Let me put it back in green here. Uh, point 10. Do you have the growth, G? And do you have the units for growth, two points? 11, do you have the value for slope from the model? And then do you have the units of slope? So two points. 
uh, 12. Do you call out uh, that x is now 1 over t? In other words, you're, you take the inverse of the temperature, and then do you have the units of the inverse of temperature, 2 points plus 2 out of 2? And then do you have a y-intercept that you calculated from your linearization, and then uh, the units of the y-intercept in uh, number of yeast cells, 2 points out of 2? If this was all neat and easy to read, uh, I gave you one point. And that was Unit 1, Quiz 1.